welcome to show number two in our mini series of what's in our closet. Last week, our guest Liz Kleppa lost internet. I've had difficulties with mine as well. So she's back this week to finish what we started and we were left with a cliffhanger. So here is Liz Kleba. And right now the weather is okay here. We're expecting rain, but no big storms. And I hope it's okay with you. Is it? Cross all those fingers and toes. <laughs> yes. Closet play image. Yes, ma'am. That is your company. It so is. tell us how you came across the name closet play image. And then let's um, get into it, please, ma'am. Okay. So I am an image consultant, a uh, wardrobe image and color consultant. And I found myself, I went through a little midlife closet crisis um, before I became an image consultant. And I'm not the only one. I know lots of women have this little midlife closet crisis. Like you open the doors of your closet and you go, who bought this stuff? Who does this belong to? This isn't me. Like, because we are no longer that person. Um, and I found that so many of the women I was talking to, and particularly the fun went out of getting dressed. Like fun was getting dressed at one point in our lives, right? It was fun when we were kids. It was fun when we were in our teens and our twenties. And then somewhere along the line, it became a burden and a chore. And so for me, the reason it's closet play is that I just really want to put the fun back in getting dressed for my clients for, and for people. And so there's a lot of emphasis on fun and play on my blog. That is what we are very interested in because our show is Happy Skin Over 50. So this is as we, everyone is leading up to 50 or 50 and above, then yes, and our closets do change, but our skin tone changes. Even the, the muscle and bone structure changes somewhat too. Yeah. So the, maybe the style that was good for us 10, 20, 50 years ago is not good now. How do you work with your clients, Liz? So if I'm working with a color client in particular, and even my style clients, we do a little bit about color because I really just, I don't want them wasting their money on clothes that don't make them glow. I mean, really, to be honest, because color is the fountain of youth. What happens, I find a lot of times is we get into these ruts or we get into these ideas about what colors we can wear, what colors we can't wear, what looked good on us when we were in our 20s and 30s. And the classic example is women who color their hair, the color it was when they were 20 or 30. And they'll come to me and they'll say, oh, well, this is my natural hair color. And I'm looking going, really? And they're like, oh yeah, it's exactly the color I had when I was you know, 25 or 30 or whatever. And I'm like, but that's not the color hair you naturally have now. And I'm not telling you, you have to go gray. I mean, I'm, I am very happy with my gray and I'm all about embracing that. But if that's not your thing, I can promise you that the colors of hair that you had when you were in your 20s will look harsh on your skin and make you look older and drawn and more haggard. And, and I, I hate to use that word, but it is just so true. It makes you look older. It makes you look drawn. And it just makes you look kind of unwell. And then you find yourself wearing more makeup to make up for it. Because what happens as we age, like you were saying, not only does our bone structure and our facial structure change, but even the color of our skin changes. So the chemicals that make up our coloring, we produce less of it as we get older. So that's the reason our hair goes gray. So when you see that first gray hair, it means all of your other coloring is changing. Your skin color is becoming softer. Your eye color actually changes if you live long enough. Um, you know, it, it will it will shift and change. I'm sorry, I have something that's beeping in the background. I did not realize that was not turned off. My apologies. It's not it's not me calling you this time. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just gonna try and ignore it. Maybe I'll like put it underneath a cushion or something. Um, there we go. We'll just throw that down there and hope it's a little quieter down there under the table. Um, but. Yeah, so when our color changes, that hair color that looked great on us when we were younger just no longer has the same correct value and intensity because it's really all about the properties of color. And so our skin color has, you know, our hair color, there's, there's color has properties. And, and we, when we play with those properties and harmonize them with the way we actually look now, 
then we look our best. It just, it helps us glow and makes us look better. When you're working with a client and, and helping to, to style them and mm -hmm. maybe make some changes in their closet, mm -hmm. are they getting rid and donating, hopefully, uh, some things, getting rid of some things that are no longer making them look good, making them feel happy, um, complimenting their look today. Yeah. For me, it is always starting with what my client already owns because it's not about, it's not like on TV. It's not about throwing everything away yeah. and starting from scratch. I mean, that's just not responsible. That's not ecologically responsible. No. It's not financially responsible. It's just not, you know, it's, it's not a feasible way to make it work. But for example, if you have a wardrobe that's very heavy in colors that don't work for you, then let's get rid of some of them. Let's keep the ones that work best for you. And then let's talk about how you can transition that. So, you know, rather than buying another pair of those pants that isn't in a great color. So let, let's create a, let's create a little wardrobe plan for you of, okay. So when this pair keep an eye peeled for something in this color and whenever this pair is wearing thin, Okay, let's replace it. Or when you're ready to update or find a new style or you gain weight or lose weight and you need to replace something, let's let's move in something that's working better for you. So it's not an overnight process. Although it's funny, I just had a client this week and we did a wardrobe edit for her. And for her, it really was, it was literally in six hours, we went through everything and we we got rid of a lot of things. And so she had she had bags for goodwill. She had bags for consignment. She had bags to return to her daughters to see if any of them wanted it. And she basically came out with a little capsule, like four, 40 some odd pieces. Well, probably more if we include winter, but of things that were perfect colors for her that make her look amazing clothes that fit the things that didn't fit. We pinned and I said, you know, take this to the tailor for this. So it's really about starting with what you have, making that work in the very, make it work as hard as it can for you. Cause you spend good money on the clothes in your closet, right? That, that's real estate. That is real estate in there. And that should be working hard for you. Like everything you bring into your, I, I joke with clients all the time and I talk to people, I think I just talked about it in a video that's going live next week on YouTube. I talk about how your, your closet is valuable real estate. We don't think about when we buy our house that our, the floor space in our closet, we're paying for that every month when we pay our mortgage or if we're right. renting, we're paying for that, for that closet. How much is that closet costing you? You know, if you've got a, you know, a $200,000 home that's 2,000 square feet, it's $100 a square foot. If you have a 16 square foot closet, that's $1,600 of closet. Does that shirt that you picked up at Target really, does, has it earned a place in your $1,600 of closet that you're paying for? You know, I think a lot of people don't think about it in that mm -hmm. way. So yeah, I like to make it so that everything that you own is working hard for you because it's making your money work and that it deserves to be there. Now I've yeah. left, uh, this, this is my uniform closet because mm -hmm. this is I wear blacks to work in my collection. Right. So, right. you know, so that's, that's what, what all of the blacks are for. However, I do have other closets that have my clothes in them, which I don't wear much because it seems like I'm wearing blacks and working all Always the time. Always at work. You brought up a, a, uh, something that, I'm going to ask you this question. Well, I'll start with this <laughs> statement. So many of us in my era and my generation have our fat clothes and our thin clothes. Mm -hmm. Do you run into that with your clients? And your I clients? do. And I have them in my closet. You know, I have things that work better when I'm heavier and I have things that work better when I'm lighter. Um, I don't generally keep all of it in the closet at the same time, though. So if, because the clothes that you have hanging in there that don't fit you are really not making you feel good. And if we're talking about happy skin, yes. what happens is when we see that, it creates two things. One, those we're looking at that and seeing, oh, I can't wear that. And it makes us feel bad about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And two, it's giving us a false illusion of choice. I feel like I have these choices, but then I go, oh, no. I don't. And then it's like, uh, you get that. Uh. But if everything that's hanging in there right now, if everything hanging in there fits you 
and makes you look and feel good, you're better off having a quarter of the things. Now, if if you're on a slimming regimen or, you know, if you're having health issues and your health is fluctuating because yeah. of medications yeah. or whatever reason, then take the things that aren't fitting you and just put them in a box. Maybe that box goes on the top shelf for your closet. Maybe it, maybe if you've got a huge closet, and you've got plenty of room, hang all that stuff in the back, you know, kind of off to the side, keep the things front and center that work for you and that are, that you can wear now. Because like I said, it's that false illusion of choice. And also that uh, it, they do, they make you feel guilty. Like, like I'm responsible for the fact that they don't fit. And, you know, whether you are or not is, is really not relevant because even if it's a medical issue, you still feel like it's your fault. And, and that just, that's putting guilt on you and you're opening the clock, your doors of your closet should not make you feel guilty. They shouldn't make you, it shouldn't make you feel sad. I mean, I would love for every woman out there to be able to open her closet doors and feel like she is walking into her own custom boutique. And that's my goal for my clients and for me. It's like, I want my own little custom boutique right here. And it doesn't have to be fancy. My closet is really boring. I mean, in the sense of like, there's no fancy bells and whistles. It's not pretty, but yeah. But it's your, it's your closet and your clothes and you feel good when you look at them. Yes. And make the decision of what you will wear today or what you'll to wear tomorrow yes. or next weekend. What yes. about those space bags that, that compress things? Do you Ooh, suggest that people for fit some of those in, in, in those things and put them they're on top They're really shelf? not good for your clothing. It's funny. Is it because of the BPV, B, BOCs um, or something? But chemicals? I'm not even sure. Yeah. But to be honest, compressing your clothes like that is not good for the clothes. Your clothes are meant to. So when you hang your clothes in the closet, there should be like an inch of space between each of your hangers because clothes need air to flow through them to help keep them fresh and to prevent them from wrinkling and crumpling. So when we squash our clothes, we're not going to get as much wear and use out of them. I mean, how many times have you pulled something out of the closet and gone, uh -huh. oh my gosh, I need to steam that. Or, oh, no, I got to throw yes. that back in the dryer on steam fresh. Or, oh, that's got to hang while I'm in the shower. And, and then you look and you go, oh, it's still rumpled. Because particularly clothes that are made with um, any polyester or any um, man-made fibers, when they wrinkle, getting those wrinkles out is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. So I'm not a fan of the compression bags at all. Um, and, you know, clothes need air to stay fresh. Yeah. Well, what about linen? When uh, somebody have a linen jacket or a linen slacks or a skirt or something Those like that. Those are just going to need more space then, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, everything needs, everything just needs a little breathing room. Think of it that way. It's like being in an elevator. Do you want to be in an elevator with, you know, at capacity, at max capacity? Or would you rather be in an elevator where you can kind of have a little elbow room? Yeah. Right? Your clothes are kind of the same. They don't want to be crammed in that elevator. <laughs> what about that? There are a lot of um, people now. And right now, we're, I'm, I'm just referring to women. I'm sure you work with, with gentlemen, too. But um, just talking about women that are recently widowed or have, have lost their marriage or divorced or something. They're yeah. changing what they wore before because it was boring or because it's what he wanted them to wear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you help people through that um, transition? Yeah, I do. So really most of the women that I work with are sort of in a range 45 and up, although I've worked with, I've worked with, you know, 20 year olds and I've worked with, I have a client who, well, I'm not sure she's 90. I mean, she's got to be a hundred now. Um, <laughs> but what happens is we spend our lives so often defined by our relationships, like you were talking about, right? We start out as somebody's daughter and then we're somebody's student and then we're somebody's girlfriend and, you know, whatever. We are so often defined by our relationships. And I find even for women who aren't widowed or divorced, when we come into kind of our 50s, all of a sudden, especially if our children have moved out of the nest, if we had children and we're now nester, empty nesters, um, all of a sudden it's like, oh, who am I and how do I want to show up in the world? Like I get to define me as me now.
Um, often, particularly when women are leaving the workplace or maybe they're transitioning from being full-time work to part-time or they're taking on a passion project or they're retiring and going on to do volunteer work. Like all of a sudden it's like, oh, I, I get to decide how I want to show up in the world now. And so that's really a fun it, it's really, it's amazing to watch women come back, back to life in a way. It's like, oh, right. I, I like totally forgot that there was this part of me and, and helping them kind of bring that back out again. So, yeah, I, I see that a lot with, with this skincare and with facials because a facial will, will change and it's like, oh, happy again. And then I've had several people like, well, now I've got to go shopping. Well, what are you going to shop for? You know, <laughs> tomato soup, celery, what, you know, no, I've got to go buy some new clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And that, that's a, that's heartwarming. That That's, that's good to see and good to feel and have yes. I've got a question that just happened to pop into my mind it's me. many years ago. And some people are still in that trend of, Okay, so I'm wearing lime green. That means I must wear lime green eyeshadow or I'm wearing blue. So it must be blue. Oh, this is turquoise. I need turquoise eyeshadow. What about that? Was, that? that was a very 70s thing. And to be honest, like the fluorescent and like really wild eyeshadow is back in again. We're, yeah. we're running that trend again. Like, and if anybody wants to ask about trends for 2022, it's kind of anything goes. You are seeing everything from the 50s to the 60s to the 70s, 80s, 90s, the aughts. I mean, we are seeing everything. There's just like a little bit of everything out there. So it's kind of a, it's like a style smorgasbord, smorgasbord, smorgasbord. Yeah. Is it a smorg or a smorg? I don't smorgasbord. know. Anyway, it's like a style this smorgasbord is my East Texas accent, so. Yeah. But no, I mean, I believe, you know, if you're wearing lime green, which to be honest, probably isn't a really awesome color for most people. Yeah. Um, not, not that I have anything against lime green. There are no, I would like to say right now, there are no bad colors. There are just colors that aren't your best, mm -hmm. right? There are no bad colors out there. There are no ugly colors because the right color looks amazing on the right person. So it, it's, it's just a matter of finding the colors that look best on you. So now for me, lime green is ghastly because my coloring is not warm in any way, shape or form. It's really cool. And lime green is a very warm color. Um, but no, I wouldn't wear lime green eyeshadow with it for sure. But I would probably have to put on extra lipstick um, in a color that looked really good on me. So that's one hint. When the lady at the store, when you are shopping, when she says, oh, you just need a little brighter lipstick. That's right now the number one clue that that is not a great color for you. Oh, if you have to put on more makeup to look good in something, it's not a color for you or it's, it's not the right, I shouldn't say it's not your color, but it's certainly not in harmony with your coloring. Yes. And it's not going to make you look your best. Like, why is it so often when women wear black, they're like, oh, I got to put on extra lipstick. It's right there. It's because mm -hmm. black isn't their color. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now I've put in the description how to get in touch with you. So uh -huh. uh, viewers that are, are watching this can find your links, but it's Liz Kleba. Yep. Um, so Closet Play Image is where you'll find me on most social media, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. So that's Closet Play Image. So you can find me there. You can also find me on my blog, which is closetplay.biz. Um, that's B-I-Z, closetplay.biz. Biz rhymes with Liz. So that's easy. Oh, I'm on YouTube as well at Closet Play Image. So I try and keep it as simple as possible for everybody. <laughs> And you, you are accepting new clients right now, right? I am. Yes, ma'am. And actually I have a, um, so some people prefer, you know, to just work one-on-one -on -one with me, but I actually have a new, um, I have a style reset program that will be beginning again on June 1st. So the style reset, and that's really exciting. That's work. That's a small group. We work um, virtually. So right now I have some clients from, I have clients from all over the world in the group, which is really fun. Yeah. And um, we're working virtually and we're finishing up our year. The next cohort begins on June 1st. And it's a year long program where you're really digging into, like I said, those things. Who am I now? How do I want to show up in the world? Where do my ideas of style come from? Like, where, where do those ideas come from? Are they coming from things I learned when I was a kid? Are they coming from 
you know, my 20s, my 30s, like where are all these concepts I have of style coming from and how do I want to show up now? Who do I want to be? Yeah. Well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for the invitation, Jill. We've had to do this a couple of times and I've tried to start the show even with a day early without you. I apologize. <laughs> But I've got a tradition here, um, and I am Jill Russell, host of Happy Skin Over 50. And I, our tradition here, as we're closing up the show, is to ask the guest who, what, or what situation was your inspiration to get you where you are today and with your company uh, and with everything that you do. Hmm. I think I would have to probably say that midlife closet crisis I was talking about. Was it? When I got, when I finally just sort of got through it and got rid of the things that no longer worked and started finding the things that were working for me, I felt like me again. Like I had yeah. lost me and finding that me was incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful. Now there's, there is a, an organization of, I was calling you stylist and that's not what the title you said, what, uh, image consultant, mm -hmm. image consultant. Yes, yes. There's an organization for that, right? That yes. Yes. A so of. I'm a member of the AICI, which is the Association of Image Consultants International. There are other um, image consulting organizations out there. There's a like, so some people wonder, like, what's the difference between an image consultant and a stylist? Yes. And that's kind of a that's kind of a whole another rabbit hole we could run down. But for image consultants in general, some people think it's all about, you know, it's for politicians and, and movie stars and right. people who need to look their best, like on the runway and stuff. And the same people have the same concept of stylists, but really an image consultant's job is to help you, like I said, figure out how you want to show up in the world and help you do that and to shine your best self out, not to make you look like somebody else, but to make you look most uniquely you and not just look like, you know, 75 other people who are styled by that same stylist. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Liz Kleber has been our guest today. Closet play image. You can find many links to her in the description on this. And Liz, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun and very interesting. And yeah. I appreciate you sharing your time with us today. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it was a privilege and a pleasure to be here and it's a treat to speak to your peeps. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to grab this and then I'll link it to my site as well so other people will find you. And thank you so much for inviting me. I wish you a wonderful weekend. I wish you the same and it will be on YouTube. So use that link. There we go. Stay safe and sound, sane and stylish. Yes. Bye.